So, so far in our game, we've looked a lot at bullets, but about if we didn't want a bullet, about if we wanted a sword or another sort of combat based weapon where the player needs to be close to an enemy or a certain object to destroy it instead. So, we're going to look at adding a sword to our player instead of bullets. So, what we've got here is we've got my sword. This is just the sprite I've created. And if I click edit, you'll see that I've added a very simple animation of striking up, across, and down. So, what do we do with this in terms of our player? So, we want to go to our event sheet, making sure we've got our keyboard added. So, if you haven't added a keyboard, just make sure you go down to input and change keyboard on there. And then we're going to check the keyboard input. So, we want to check on key pressed. I'm going to use spacebar, but you can use whichever key you want to use for your game. What do we want to do? So, we want to take the player. And we want to spawn an object on the player. So we go down to spawn another object. And we want to spawn the sword. And then we press done. So before we do anything, let's test this. Because we're going to get some issues that come with this. So first of all, you can see that I've got more than one sword. So I can keep spamming space and the sword keeps coming out. But secondly, the sword appears on top of our character. So let's start by fixing the sword on top of our character. So what we're going to do is going to edit our character. And we're going to set up a new origin point. So origin point is a way that we can pick where objects spawn. So add a new image point, image point 1. And we're going to move this image point to be in front of the player about their works. Right click on this origin point and apply to the whole animation. If you've got one animation like I have. Or apply to all animations if this is going to be across multiple animations. So I'm going to apply it to all animations. I'm going to test it again. And we need to remember to also change our image point to 1. So it's spawning on our image point. So let's test this now we've done that. And our sword's in front. Now you can see that mine needs to go slightly more in front. But on the whole, that's not too bad. You can also see my sword's not being destroyed. And again, I can spawn multiple swords. So that's our next problem to fix. So we're going to add a new action. System. And we're going to scroll down to wait. And we're going to wait a whole second. And then we're going to destroy our sword. So it no longer exists. So this solves one problem. Our sword now destroys, but we can still spam our sword. So let's fix that problem next. So this way it gets a little bit more complex, but what we need to do is click on our character. We need to add something called an instance variable. So the variable that we want to add is something called a Boolean. Now Boolean just means on or off. So we want to have a new variable, we'll call it attacking. And by default, it's going to be set to false, so we're not going to tick this, because the player is not currently attacking. So we go to our event sheet, and we're going to add another condition. So we're going to check if the player is not currently attacking. So the only way they're allowed to attack is if they're not currently attacking. So is Boolean instance variable set attacking? So is player attacking? We're just going to right-click on this one and just invert that. So now is player not attacking. So just the invert option there. So if the player is not attacking, they're allowed to attack. Now we need to make sure that they can't spam the attack. So we're going to go back to our player. We're going to scroll down. And now we're going to set a Boolean value. I'm going to set attacking to true. And then we're also going to copy and paste this. And we're going to change it to false. So at the start of the attack. We want to change this to true, and at the end we want to change this to false. You might be thinking why we're we not applying this to the sword. Well, the sword gets destroyed, so the variable is lost when it gets destroyed. So this can cause us some issues, why the player is staying around for the whole level, and if the player gets destroyed, then we're destroying the sword anyway. So if we test this once more, now you can hear me spamming the space bar, but we're only getting one attack happening at one time. Final thing we need to do is just make it so we destroy anything we touch. 
So I'm just going to add on my sword and check if it's overlapping another object. And we're going to take our red moving box that we've been using before and add action. So what we want to do is we then want to destroy our box. So let's test this. We come across and you notice that nothing's happening to our box. Actually, we've got no collision on it whatsoever. But as soon as we pull our sword out, we then get that issue. One issue we've still got is our sword does not follow our player. So that's something else that we can look at fixing. So to fix our last sword problem, what we're going to do is just make sure we delete our sword at the top here. We don't need that anymore. So we can get rid of that. And then we're going to go to our event sheet. So we're going to add a brand new event onto our system and scroll down. And oh, not that one, slightly higher up, sorry. We want this to be every tick. So what a tick is, it's a game tick. So most games run about 60 frames a second. So this is checking something 60 times a second, 30 times a second, depending on what ticks construct runs. This will be happening very, very quickly. So every tick, what we want to do is we want to get our sort and we want to set its location to the same of our players so set position to another object and we want to choose our player and it's going to ask us which image point and we set up one already for our sword so image point one so we'll press done and then we'll hit play so you'll see nothing's really different until we get our sword out and now our sword's going to follow our player around so no matter which way our player is facing, the sword will follow and match with the player also. So really, really handy, really simple sort of command that we can do there as well.